صدق الله العلي العظيم وبلغ رسوله النبي الوسيل الكريم أيها الإخوة آية زلزو سموا زاونيشا كمبا تتزنغو مزيوا نيني نا الشيخ إمران بن حسين أتتزنغو مزيا دروس وعبر كتك قصوى جا نبي الله موسى نا خذر عليه ما السلام وإفو تويني وطليفو ili tujue kwamba tunasoma nini 
na tunapata faida gani katika kiswa cha Nabi Allahi Musa na Khadri alayhi masalam sasa ni wakati wake wa Sheikh Imran ibn Hussein fatafadhal mashkuran majuran Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladhina astafa khususan ala afdalihim wa khatamin nabiyyin Muhammadin al-amin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba' fa'a'udhu billahi min ashaytanir rajim bismillahirrahmanirrahim ونزلنا عليك الكتابة بيانا لكل شيء وهدى ورحمة وبشرى للمسلمين صدق الله العظيم. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings. On all his noble messengers, and in particular, on the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam, as we greet you here in Masjid Kunzi in Mombasa, with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is the tenth of the month of Muharram. And it is a blessed night, and uh, we are grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and to Masjid Kunzi for inviting us to speak on this blessed night of Ashura on the subject of the encounter of Musa alayhi salam with Khidr alayhi salam and this encounter is recorded in Surah Al-Kahf of the Quran and this is the only Surah mm -hmm. of the whole Quran which Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has identified with Al-Masih al-Dajjal he said Recite the first ten ayat of Surah Al Kaf, and you will be protected from the fitna of Dajjal. Now, that is not a simple statement, that is a very heavy statement. Why? Because he said about the fitna of al-Masih al-Dajjal that it would be the greatest fitna that mankind will experience from the time of Adam alayhi salam to the last day and so even a schoolboy would recognize that the fitna of Dajjal is a supremely important subject and a tremendously dangerous thing. And so when we are told to recite the first ten ayat of Surah Al-Kaf for protection from the fitna of Dajjal, it is time for us to pay very careful attention to this subject. And that's what we will do in the limited time that we have left before the Azan of Salatul Isha. Hopefully, we can continue after the Azan with the permission of the Imam. And we begin with this warning of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He said that Dajjal comes with two things. 
a river and a fire. But his river is a fire. And his fire is the cool waters of a river. Whoever falls in his river will have his load of sins increased. And whoever falls in his fire, like the people of Gaza, like the people of Kashmir, whoever falls in his fire will have his load of sins made less decreased. And so, it is clear that Dajjal is a master of deception. Why? Because he takes the road to heaven and makes it look like the road to hell, Jahannam. And he takes the road to hell, to Jahannam, and he makes it look like the road to heaven. And so, appearance and reality are different from each other. And whoever sees with only one eye will pass, will make judgment based on the external form of things and be deceived. And the Jal sees with one eye. Remember what our prophet said. Every prophet has warned his people about the Jal. And the Prophet knew Alayhi Salam has warned his people about the Jal. But I will say something now about the Jal. No one has said before me, this is new to the world. The Jal sees with the left eye. He's blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grip. But your Lord is not one-eyed. Between his eyes on his forehead is written the word kafir. And uh, every mu'min would be able to read kafir whether he is katib or ghayru katib he is literate or illiterate we do not have the time to explain and interpret excuse me and so i have to cut short when the jal sees with his left eye it symbolizes external sight and so knowledge that is externally acquired, like scientific knowledge. And when the Jal is blind in his right eye, it symbolizes internal blindness. And Allah speaks about that internal blindness. And uh, it will be good for our politicians to listen to this. He says, Allah says about some people, Lahum kulubun la yafkahuna biha, wa lahum a'yunun la yubsiruna biha, wa lahum adhanun la yasma'una biha. They have eyes. And yet they do not see. They have ears. And yet they do not hear. They have hearts. And yet they do not 
understand they are just like cattle those who are internally blind and he says something more he says man kana fi hadhihi a'ama fa huwa fil akhirati a'ama wa adalla sabil if you are blind in this world you will be blind in the next world as well and even more misguided and so the jal is internally blind and he wants all of mankind to become like him people who see with only one eye if he can transform us all into people who are internally blind then we will see the road to heaven and we will say this is the road to heaven and we will go down that road and he will take us to hell and if we are internally blind we will see the road to hell he shows us the road to hell no 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 i don't want to go on that road not me but that's the road to heaven <laughs> so we pay a terrible price if we cannot penetrate beyond the external form to reach the internal substance and Allah chooses one people to send the message to them in particular while the message is sent to Mombasa as well but the message is sent in particular to a people who say we are the chosen of the Lord God we are born superior to the rest of mankind we are the elite of the world we are the intellectual elite of mankind look at all the nobel prizes our people with them <laughs> and they look down upon us and upon the rest of mankind and they say heaven is reserved for us so Allah sends a message to them but he uses the Nabi to send the message to them. Let me repeat that. Allah uses the Nabi, Nabi Musa Islam, to send a message to them. So Nabi Musa alayhi salam and Banu Israel are in Sinai. And they are traveling around in Sinai and they stop sometimes and they have a mobile masjid they take it with them wherever they go mm. and so they have their their religious prayers wherever they stop and uh, Musa alayhi salam delivers a khutbah and one of the men came to him and said oh Musa what a fine khutbah you must be the most learned of all men remember that's what they say that is what they say remember that so he said yes i am the most learned of men because that is what they say then allah says no you are not the most learned there's one more learned than you and that is the message being conveyed to them that in akhiru zaman there'll be servants of allah more learned than you washington so watch it so musa -Islam says i would like to meet him and that is the advice being given to banu israel you better go 
and seek the people who are more learned than you. So Allah says you will meet him at Majma'ul Bahrain. You will meet him at Majma'ul Bahrain, the most learned of all men in Akhirul Zaman will be found at Majma'ul Bahrain, not in the Darul Ulum, not in Jamiatul Azhar. No, you will find the most learned of all men at Majma'ul Bahrain. And uh, in the Hadith, we are told we don't know his name, but we know that he is called Khidr. And Khidr from Khadr is green. So, so how did he get this name, green? The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala answered that question. He said that he came to a land which was barren, nothing growing. And when he sat down in that land, everything came out green. So that's how he got the name Green Khidr, meaning the knowledge that comes from this scholar is not mechanical knowledge. It's not like the knowledge that comes from a factory that is repeated over and over and over again. No. The knowledge that comes from him is like raindrops which fall from the sky and they bring the dead heart back to life. They revive people. They revive a town. They revive a city. They revive the world. This is not ordinary knowledge. This is knowledge that puts a flame in your heart and changes your life. That's the man. So he's not the ordinary scholar of Islam. <laughs> no. That is the scholar of Akhirul Zaman. If you find such a man, follow him. So you will find him where? You'll find him at Majma'ul Bahrain, at the places where the two oceans meet. But in his wisdom, Allah sent two kinds of verses in the Quran, and the enemy is very angry about that. Oh, yes. Why did he do that? He sent two kinds of verses in the Quran. He sent ayat muhkamat, which everybody can understand. Even Washington can understand. But he also sent ayat mutashabihat, which they cannot understand. And he says about the Quran, he says, La yamassuhu illa al-mutahharun. La yamassuhu illa al-mutahharun. This is not the physical Quran. Because you can buy a physical Quran in the, must, in the bookstore. Even the enemy can do that. So then, which Quran is he talking about? That none can touch it except those who are clean. He's not talking about touching this Quran, no. Anybody can touch this. Some say, well, it's the Quran in Law al-Mahfuz. Over there, only those who are clean can touch it. That also is wrong. Because over there, everyone is clean. <laughs> everyone over there is clean. So then what does it mean? 
we send this message to our enemies. Let them bite their fingernails in frustration. Allah is saying that if the knowledge in this Quran is miles and miles and miles long, you cannot even get an inch. That is must. You cannot even get an inch if you're not clean and pure. So let them bite their fingernails. They cannot interpret the Quran. The ayat mutashabihat are verses which have to be interpreted. And when Allah says that you will meet the most learned of all men at Majma'ul Bahrain, at the place where the two oceans meet, he's talking about he is talking about the ocean of knowledge which is externally acquired. And that's why you go to school. You have to go to school, yes, you have to learn. You have to study. And Allah teaches with the pen. Did you hear that? Did you hear that with your smartphone? Huh? Allah teaches with the kalam. <laughs> so the, the knowledge, the ocean of knowledge which comes externally and the ocean of knowledge which is received internally. That's why Washington is so angry. When these two oceans of knowledge are harmoniously integrated, harmoniously integrated as a whole, that is where you'll find him, the most learned of all men. And our Darul Loom have lost sight of this. Our Jamia has lost sight of this. And as a consequence, we are no longer producing scholars that we need for this age. So he went traveling, Musa alayhi salam, in search of Majma'ul Bahrain. And he took a boy with him. And uh, they came to a rock. And they stopped for a while. And he slept for a while. But after he woke up, and they went beyond the rock, suddenly the journey becomes tiresome. I'm feeling tired. Why? Because if you are on the right road, Sabilullah, no matter how old you become, you will always be vigorous in the journey. Yes. You will never give up this journey if you are on the right road. But when you are misguided and you are on the wrong road, shaitan is deceiving you, then the journey of life becomes tiresome. And that's the sign. That's the sign. You're on the wrong road. And this is a night for us to remember that. So he said to his servant, لَقَدْ لَكِينَ مِنْ سَفَرٍ يَهَذَا نُصَبَ This journey has become tiresome. أَتِنَا غَدَأَنَا Bring the food, let's eat. Then the servant said to him, I'm sorry, I forgot. I forgot. What did he forget? I forgot to tell you what happened when we stopped at the rock that the fish jumped out of the basket and made its way into sea into the sea and Allah says no he didn't forget shaitan caused him to forget <laughs> 
So whenever Shaitan causes us to forget, make this dua to Allah. So he said, let's go back. That's where we want to go. So they returned to the rock and they met this man sitting on the rock. The most learned of all men in Akhiru Zaman does not sit on the sand. He sits on the rock. The one on the sand, the wind blows this way, he turns this way. The wind blows that way, he turns that way. But the one on the rock, he has a backbone made of steel. They can't frighten him with their 9-11. He stands up for the truth regardless of the price he has to pay. This is the servant of Allah. He's not with a sword in his hand waging war on the whole world. Only a donkey does that. He doesn't want to conquer the whole world. Only a donkey does that. Only a donkey does that. No. He stands up for the truth. Like Malcolm X. And when he speaks, he speaks gracefully. He speaks gracefully, but his language, his words are like bullets. They don't have an answer for Malcolm. Malcolm never went to Al Azhar University. No. Malcolm is an African American. His fathers were slaves. Eh? And yet Malcolm emerged as the most powerful voice in the whole of America challenging the oppressor. There's never been a more powerful voice than his and yet the most graceful voice, the most dignified voice. And so in Akhiru Zaman you'll find the most learned scholar of all sitting on the rock. Look for him to see what kind of backbone he has. So Musa Islam says to him, I want to follow you to learn from you the knowledge that Allah gave to you. And the answer that was given is so beautiful so beautiful they qualify as the two most important ayat of the whole Quran for Akhiru Zaman what does he say he's talking to those who have the arrogance that they are learned and looking down on the servants of Allah who are trying to put terror in our hearts to silence us. He says, Innaka lantas tatiya ma'iya sabra. No, Musa. You cannot bear with what I have to say. You don't have the patience for what I have to teach. إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَسْتَتِيَ مَعِيَ الصَّبْرَ وَكَيْفَ تَصْبِرُ عَلَى مَا لَمْ تُحِدْ بِهِ خُبْرَ Oh, this is dynamite. And how can you show patience in respect of that which lies beyond your capacity to understand? Oh my gosh. Banu Israel and the Jews, they're biting their fingers with this. The Zionists biting their fingers with this statement. وَكَيْفَ تَصْبِرُوا عَلَى مَا لَمْ تُحِتْ بِهِ خُبْرًا 
how can you show patience in respect of that which lies beyond your capacity to comprehend so Moses said I'll show patience and then Khidr said and this message is being sent to those who believe they are the elite of mankind they are the chosen people of the Lord God Khidr said okay you can come along you can study with me but you do not ask any questions oh my gosh but this is the man who just said I'm the most learned of all men and the condition that you can learn with me is that you must not ask any questions this is not the way a teacher teaches a teacher when he teaches a student who has hunger in his heart for knowledge would find in such a student respect for the teacher respect for knowledge and humility so such a student can ask a thousand questions such a student can ask a thousand questions the teacher will be patient with him my teacher was patient with me I ask a thousand questions but when you have those who are arrogant and that is what modern western civilization has brought arrogance and we thank Allah that the arrogant are now going to bite the dust we thank Allah for Surah to Rahman we thank Allah for Surah to Rahman that the arrogant of the world are going to bite the dust it's just a little time again when you meet those who are arrogant this is what you say to them you can come along but don't ask any questions that is to cut them down to size so there are two ways of teaching in Akhiru Zaman the first way is where the teacher is gentle and kind and loving and these are for the servants of Allah and the other way is shut your mouth and sit down don't ask any questions and when we put this with them they turn away <laughs> when we give this kind of answer to them they turn away they know they can't do anything to us yes and then three events occurred and we do not have the time unfortunately to analyze each one of the three but I have a book somewhere at the back perhaps the books are there all my books and this book is entitled Surah al Kaf and the Modern Age and in this book I analyze all the events of Surah al Kaf and in particular the encounter of Musa and Khidr alayhim salam and I, I analyze the three things that happened number one the boy sorry sorry number one the boat the boat number two the boy and number three the wall you, you know what I'm talking about shake your hands shake your head huh? oh some of you don't know what I'm talking about oh you mean you you've not done your homework huh? <laughs> I I have to do the homework for you now hmm? Surah al kaf tells us in that in the encounter between Musa and Khidr alayhi salam three events occurred what time is the azan? now? now 12 minutes to azan 12 minutes until 8 until 8 oh good fine Musa alayhi salam is traveling with Khidr alayhi salam and they come to the water and there is a passage of water maybe a river and they have to cross and the boatmen 
they know Khidr alayhi islam, they invite him to come on board and they don't charge him anything. But while crossing the river, Khidr alayhi salam goes down to the bottom of the boat and he takes uh, uh, an, an, an instrument that you use in the garden hmm, and he damages the bottom of the boat. It's called scuttling the boat. So Musa alayhi salam is very annoyed. These are poor fishermen and they are offering us a ride on the boat and this is what you do. Musa uses external knowledge to form a judgment and his judgment is that this is bad and he condemns it. So he asks why did you do this? And Khidr alayhi islam responds and said, but you're not supposed to ask any questions. So he says, kindly, excuse me, I forgot. And then after they got off the boat and they again traveling, he came across a boy and Khidr alayhi islam killed the boy. Now Musa is very annoyed because Remember, he accidentally killed a man in Egypt and paid a very dreadful price for that. So he condemns the action. Why did you kill the innocent boy? And Khidr al-Islam responds and said, did I not tell you that you would not be able to show patience with me? You're not supposed to ask questions. So then Musa said, I promise I will not ask any more questions. And if I do, you can send me packing. And then they traveled for some distance and they came to a town. But the town offered no hospitality. And uh, Musa al-Islam is broken hearted, no hospitality. And then he saw Khidr al-Islam doing something strange this town is so inhospitable and yet there is a wall crumbling and he pays from his own pocket for the wall to be rebuilt you should at least ask for a refund of your money why did you do that so Khidr al-Islam said has a firakun baini wa baini now we got a part you go your way I go mine. But before you go, let me give you the ta'wil. Did you hear that word? The ta'wil of these events. Ta'wil is interpretation. Ayat mutashabihat, ayat of the Quran which have to be interpreted and the knowledge with which you interpret doesn't come from the university the knowledge with which you interpret the Quran and interpret the hadith comes from Allah and so when anyone makes a ta'wil of the Quran only Allah can confirm that it is correct and so you do not use a ta'wil of the Quran to divide the Muslims to establish a sect and to say I am the one who is rightly guided on ta'wil Rather, when you make it a ta'wil of the Qur'an, you must be humble enough to say, Allahu alam, Allah knows best. But if you make it a ta'wil of the Qur'an, you should only do so when you are confident in your heart that you are giving a correct interpretation. 
if there's any doubt in your heart shut up number two when you give a ta'wil of the Quran even if no one has ever said that before in all of history this is the first time anyone is saying it never mind because if it is the truth it will survive no one no one no one can succeed in blocking the truth so even if you are one solitary voice in the world like Malcolm was one solitary voice in New York if you are one solitary voice if you give it a wheel and it is the truth you will go in your grave but the truth will survive the truth will survive so let me give you the ta'wil Musa before you go that boat belonged to the poor fishermen but in Akhiru Zaman there will be governments that will come to take everything that you have and they will take even the little that the poor have even from the poor they will take it mercilessly that is Akhiru Zaman and I damaged the boat <laughs> so that when they come to seize the boat they will not take it because it is damaged and so what you thought was bad was in fact the opposite appearance and reality were opposite to each other and so many things in the world today the political system the economic system the monetary system the educational system in all of these appearance and reality are opposite to each other like the boat and so Surat al -Kaf is sending the mother of all messages to you be careful in Akhiru Zaman you must penetrate beyond the external appearance to reach the internal reality and then you'll understand why is Africa so poor and growing poorer how did they rip you off and are still ripping you off where are the scholars where are the scholars in Akhiru Zaman hmm? we are producing them in the hundreds of thousands and an enormous amount of money is going to produce them hundreds of thousands of factories are filled with them but how many are they who are located at Majmah al Bahrain it was my good fortune for which I thank Allah that I was the student of such a scholar who was at Majmah al Bahrain which is why today I can speak the way I do and then they went to the boy and he killed the boy and uh, Khidr had done something which causes great pain to Musa why did you do that innocent boy but in Akhiru Zaman the Jal is going to take the youth and capture them with drugs with pornography he will capture them and mesmerize them and they will not be your children anymore they will belong to him as Allah said to Nabi Nuh alayhi salam, no he's not your son he's not your son no so I kill him because he was a threat to his parents so the message is being sent that in Akhiru Zaman when your children become 
a threat to your own Iman. Put them away. Separate from them. And I pray that Allah might send a better child to them. Like I travel the world. And wherever I go, Allah send me wonderful sons. Yeah. In Mombasa, and not only Muslim, Christian as well. They are part of my team. And they are my sons. Wonderful people. So Allah could send you another son. Who would be better for you and Rahmah. And that wall, there was this believer who was dying and leaving behind two orphans. And he had some money to, for his children, for their inheritance. And he could not find anyone he could trust, like Manhattan. So what did he do? He dug a hole and buried the money and I have a question to ask Masjid Kunzi can I ask it may I yes. can we bury electronic money huh I'm not, I'm not hearing your answer I'm not hearing your answer can we bury electronic money So he dug a hole and he buried the money. Huh? It wasn't cryptocurrencies. It wasn't Bitcoin. It wasn't electronic money. And it wasn't paper money. Bogus, fraudulent, utterly haram paper money. How could I use such language in the masjid? How do I dare to use such language in the masjid, the house of Allah? That the paper money we are using is bogus, it's fraudulent, and it's utterly haram, and it's a vehicle of our exploitation and enslavement. The reason why I can talk like that is because I know my subject. That's why I can talk like that. No one can challenge me. I'm confident about my subject. You can't bury paper money. So they buried the money and he built a wall. And I said maybe he knew that they might come with their metal sensors, you know, to check for metal coins. So if you build a structure on top of the wall, then the metal sensors would not be able to pick up, but there's money underneath there. And uh, because the wall was crumbling, Allah asked me to rebuild the wall so that the money can be protected. And when the children grow up, then that money will be there saved for them. This is the ta'wil that you didn't have the patience to bear with. And now you can go. This is the encounter of Musa alayhi salam with Khidr alayhi salam and it is the most important passage of the whole Quran for understanding Akhiru Zaman and for responding to Akhiru Zaman now to end what do we do? what do we do? the answer is if you do not have Noor in your heart forget it you cannot survive Akhiru Zaman. How do we get Noor in the heart? Answer. If you recite the Quran every day as it ought to be recited, that is from cover to cover during one month. And I'm not talking about the month that has come from the Dajjal. January and February and March. That is the month which has come from Dajjal. I'm talking about the month which has come from Allah. Muharram and Safar and Rabir, the lunar month. Then when you recite the Quran as it ought to be recited, from cover to cover, every month, then the Quran can give you nur in your heart. But 
nor will not enter into the heart unless the heart is beating in harmony with the rest of Allah's creation. If the heart is not beating, when the heart goes out of step with the rest of Allah's creation, guess what happens? Shall I tell you? Nabi Muhammad warned, when the heart is beating out of step with the rest of Allah's creation, then he says, time will move faster and yet faster. So if you have the perception that time is moving faster and faster for you, I have news for you. Your heart is not beating in harmony with the rest of Allah's creation. Your heart is out of step. That's why you have the perception that time is moving faster and faster. And a whole year will pass like a month. And a whole month will pass like a week. And a whole week will pass like a day. And a whole day will pass like the amount of time it takes to kindle. Like an hour. And a whole hour will pass like the amount of time it takes to kindle the fire. But when your heart begins to beat in harmony with the rest of Allah's creation, then Noor can enter into your heart. They don't teach this in the Darul Ulum. I'm sorry to raise my voice, but my anger is so great. My anger is so great at this, the collapse of Islamic scholarship in Akhirul Zaman. We're producing hundreds of thousands of them from the Darul Room. It makes no difference, none. What we need is a Khidr, and we're not producing the Khidr. And when you recite the Quran over a period of one month, when the moon is seen, you begin. And by the time the month has ended, you complete. If you recite the Quran as it ought to be recited, and I don't have the time to deliver that lecture, maybe on another occasion before I leave Mombasa, we can give that lecture. If you recite the Quran as it ought to be recited, your heart will beat in harmony with the system of time that Allah has given for his entire world creation. And when your heart is beating like that, Noor will enter into your heart. And when Noor enters into your heart, you will then be able to see the strategies of the Jal. He will not deceive you. You will not be deceived by the world of appearances. You will recognize the reality of things. And then you'll be able to take appropriate action. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might bless all those who now return to Surah to the Kaf of the Quran for guidance in Akhirul Zaman. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samir alim wa tub alayna ya mulana inna ka anta tawab rahim wa rahmataka ya arhamu rahimin. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah, alhamdu daima lillah Kwa kukabilisha mihadhara etu kwa siku ya leo Na mwana chuoni wetu mkubwa Al-Sheikh Imran bin Sheikh Hussein Ambaye metuhutubia kuhusu Kisa chanabi Allahi Musa 
pamoja na Sayyidina Khidir alayhi salam na walillahi alhamdu pia leo tumepata mwanachuoni wetu alim wetu alustad harith ambaye kwa tawadhu ikubwa atufundisha kwamba hivi ndivyo natakana mtu ena tawadhu hakika si mahala pake hapo alpoketi lakini amesema la niache na mimi nimsikize mgeni wetu maulana sheikh imran bin sheikh hussein tumefurahi kwa kisa alichotoa na kwa kuwa ni tumemuomba kwamba ikiwa kuna mtu ana suala moja mbili hata kama kwa upande wa kina mama basi inshallah tutatoa hizo nafasi kisha atakaye tumalizia si mwingine ila mwanachuni wetu alustad harith ndiye atatufungia leo kwa kumshukuru mgeni wetu na nyote mlihudhuria sasa ikiwa kuna suala yoyote mtu atainua mkono aulize ili tuweze kufunga jalsa kama hakuna tuombe dua naam sikia gariba job Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh you mentioned something to do with the heart yeah. That the nur enters the heart. So I was wondering what do you mean by heart exactly? Is it like spiritual or is it like a physical heart? Swala la kwanza, swala la pili. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Samani Sheikh Nlependa kuliuliza ile swali kwa Kiswahili na mmoja kati ya wale mnaotarajia walijibu swali hili ni shekhu wetu Ustad Badru. Ili swali nilikuwa niko nalo tangu nyuma lakini sikupata nafasi lakini leo nashukuru nimewafikia kuliuliza. Hii tabia ya wanawake kwenda maholini tukiangalia na tukipima kwamba ule ufisadi wake ni mkubwa kuliko maslahi yake je jambo kama hili mashehe wanaume vijana walitalika zania vipi ili kupunguza athari ya munkar kama huu jazakumullahu khairan naam tutaka swali lingine kwa lugha kizungu shekha kama panda kizungu cha panda sawa kama kipandi kama mimi ah uh, thank you shekha for your lecture barakallahu fik Uh, I have a question uh, about Khidr alayhi salam. The question is does nur enter into the physical heart yes. or is there another heart? The answer is we have a spiritual heart in addition to the physical heart and the nur enters into the spiritual heart. No, thank you so much. Uh, my question is uh, is uh, Khidr alayhi salam he's still alive until now or uh, and his uh, and uh, the next question is uh, he was a messenger or The question is is Khidr alayhi salam alive until this time? And is he a prophet of Allah? <laughs> the answer is We have no knowledge of this subject other than what is in the Quran and what has come from Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and neither in the Quran nor in the hadith is there any information with which I can answer you no we do not know whether he is alive or he is dead we don't know and it's not something important to us we do not know who he was whether he was a prophet or not but he was something higher in learning than nabi musa alayhi salam more learned and that's why we say khidr alayhi salam inshallah upande wa kina mama ikiwa kuna suala pia mweza kuliandika tamtuma mtu atakwenda kuchukua ikiwa kuna swala mweza kuliandika nafikiri inshallah
السلام عليكم يا شيخ جزاك الله خير for your enlightening khutbah I just needed some clarification uh, you addressed the aspect of deceit I mean uh, when we perceive things with the external eye to be able to counter this deceit definitely somebody requires knowledge but then it also seems that you were not satisfied with the learning institutions they're not uh, achieving the target of enlightening the people to see the deceit can you clarify on that please if our scholars of Islam over the last 100 years or more were men like Khidr alayhi salam the enemy would never have succeeded in taking dinar and dirham out of the market and then replacing it with paper money and then when the paper money came there were few scholars of Islam may Allah build houses for them in Jannah today they have forgotten and those few voices stood up and said this is wrong this is bogus this is not money and we must stay with the money that Allah and his messenger gave but the overwhelming majority of the scholars deferred with them and their voices were lost and then the bogus money took over and today after more than a hundred years we still cannot get a fatwa from them and I have to restrain my anger I have to restrain my anger we still cannot get a fatwa from them that the monetary system based on paper money is bogus and fraudulent and haram and what they do with me they close the doors of the masjid to me he is a terrorist stay away from him he's misguided fine go ahead the angel will come for me tomorrow and i will go in my grave and leave the world for you i know i am right and i know you have betrayed the ummah on this supremely important subject of riba and that is what the monetary system is riba that's what they've done and then came the movement from paper money to the petrodollar and this is in Sahih Bukhari the petrodollar but they eat the biryani and go home and sleep they don't think anymore that's what we have today and the appearance is that this is valid money the reality it is bogus money and it has already ripped us off and when I drive around Mombasa I see the miserable poverty and I know that this miserable poverty has come because of the betrayal of our people that if we had stood up and defended the dinar and dirham even if we have to die we will not abandon the dinar and dirham our people will continue to buy and sell with the dinar and dirham until the international monetary firm get lost tell Washington get lost who spoke like that and now it's too late 
and now they're moving from the petrodollar, which is in so which is in Sahih Bukhari, if you've been listening to my lectures on Islam and the international monetary system, if if you have been listening to my lectures, they're moving from the petrodollar to cryptocurrencies. Why? Why? The reason why they're moving to cryptocurrencies is to dislodge money from the control of governments. And when they dislodge money from the control of governments, because any Tom, Dick and Harry can now issue cryptocurrencies, then they will come with one currency, one money for all of mankind. And guess who will control that money? Huh? That's right, the state of Israel. And then it'll be too late to cry. It's too late to cry. But after the Jal comes and he stands up in Jerusalem to declare, I am Al Masi, would, would Israel be using bogus money? No. Israel has to return to Dinar and Dirham because every Jew knows that that is real money. And so there is a tomorrow coming when dinar and dirham or gold and silver will once again be money. But I don't want to live to see that day because the shame and the disgrace would be too much for me. I prefer to be in my grave on that day rather than to live to see that day when they will bring back real money. And we remain with this bogus money because our scholars have betrayed my language. I'm sorry. My language is very strong, but I'm 77 years of age and I've been in the field for a long, long time. I was supposed to be in Iran, not in Mombasa. I was supposed to be in Iran and Iran is vastly more important because Iran had a revolution 30 something years ago. Islamic rebel, and they're still using bogus money. <laughs> but when my, when my visit to Iran had to be canceled, then Allah opened the way for me to come to Mombasa. Inshallah, tataraji hilo takuwa ni suala la mwisho, kusababu wakti nao umesha kamilika. Sheikh, my question will dwell on this figure of uh, uh, Dajjal. Here, there have been many interpretation, many ta'awilat about who this, this figure or this man or how, how is he, is it physical as we say or is it an idea there is uh, this uh, from the Western world, Europe, this is New World Order. Is that, uh, it, this is the most powerful uh, um, uh, in, uh, interpretation that this New World, this New World is Dajjal on the, yeah, he's, he's coming on that uh, philosophy or that uh, uh, system of government. So I please your own feelings, your own interpretation will be welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, I am supposed to leave Mombasa on the 15th, inshallah, and return on the 19th. Inshallah. I'm going to Zanzibar. But when I come back, I have two days, uh, 20th and 21st. And I'm asking my organizers here to try to organize the program, the lecture, on Dajjal when I return. Hmm? Inshallah. Dajjal in the Quran. Dajjal in the Quran. That's the topic. Uh, but there are two, two books at the back that I've already written on Dajjal. One is entitled Dajjal the Quran and Awwalu Zaman because Allah says he is Awwalu Wal Akhir Wa Zahiru Wal Batin that if you want to understand the end you've got to begin go to the beginning because the beginning and the end are connected hmm? 
and he says he is Zahir and Batin. So if you want to understand the Zahir, you got to enter into the Batin, the in internal part of the subject. So that book is at the back. And then there is my last book, the Jal, the Quran and the Jasad. But I don't want you to wait until 21st, so give me five minutes. Five minutes on the Jal in the Quran. Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam is ruling the world from the holy state of Israel. But we call it the Khilafah state. And it's a ruling state in the world. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a vision. He saw something. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّا Sulaiman. Allah tested him. وَأَلْقَيْنَا عَلَى كُرْسِيهِ جَسَدْ And Allah placed a jasad on his throne. When the Samiri made the calf, the golden calf, that was a jasad. But that's a body without a soul, the Samiri. But this cannot be a calf. There has to be a human being sitting on the throne. When Musa, when, when Suleiman al-Islam saw the jasad in the vision, he's the wisest of all men. So he recognized, number one, that this is a very evil being, number one. Number two, he wants to inherit my kingdom. He wants to rule the world from holy Jerusalem. Easily for us to recognize that is the job. Easy. That that jasad that Allah showed him sitting on the throne is Dajjal. So then he made a dua. Call a rabbik firli. He said, Oh Allah, kindly forgive me. This is a general dua for forgiveness. Wahabli mulkan la yambari li ahadim min ba'di. And grant that none can inherit my kingdom. Because I don't want him to inherit my kingdom. And number two, that there could never be another kingdom can mine, like mine. So he can do what he wants, he could never have a kingdom like mine. That was Dajjal. And Allah answered his dua. And as soon as Suleiman died, the kingdom collapsed and has never been restored to this day. What we have is a bogus imposter today. But when Suleiman died, I wish I had another 15 minutes, but I don't have it, sorry. Yeah. Um, when Suleiman died, everybody knew he was dead. Everybody knew, except the jinn who were in chains, who were akharina mukarranina fil asfan. And they thought it was Suleiman sitting on the throne. Because he was holding the, he was holding the, the staff. And so long as he's holding the staff, the staff has miraculous qualities, like the staff of Musa al-Islam. So the jinn is seeing Suleiman walking, talking, sitting, standing. And so they kept on walking for this fellow sitting on the throne who is the child and they are still doing that up to this day they don't know he's dead and that's why modern western civilization has achieved such advances in the scientific and technological revolution yes and Israel is where it is today because it's not just human effort it's the jinn the evil jinn but then comes the battle up. And when that battle up comes, the akulu, they will consume min sa'atahu. And all the scholars I consulted, the experts in Arabic, they all said the same thing to me. The min sa'a is the stuff. But Allah was kind to me. I used the methodology that I got from my teacher. And I realized they're wrong. Every time Allah uses the word staff in the Quran, 
he uses asa always asa so minsa cannot be the staff it has to be something connected with the staff so that battle and will come to destroy that which is the spiritual heart of the staff which gives it its miraculous quality and when ta'kulu min sa'atahu when that battle out does that the staff will then collapse and when the staff collapses then the jinn will realize this is not Suleiman this is someone else this is Dajjal and they stop working for him but the Quran says about that battle out taklimuhum although when you read it today is takalimuhum but it is actually taklimuhum the dab battle out will also cause damage to us and that is the electromagnetic waves coming in the world today inundating us and once the great war takes place with the nuclear weapons the radiation which comes from those nuclear bombs will come around the world how do we protect ourselves from the battle up you'll be surprised listen وَإِذَا كَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنِ وَإِذَا كَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنِ And when you recite the Qur'an as it ought to be recited جَعَلْنَا بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ هِجَابًا مَسْتُورًا It is as though this verse was not there in the Qur'an and we discovered it one day that when you recite the Quran as it ought to be recited the Quran will protect you Allah will place a hijab around you separating you from that and mustur covering you and you will be protected from that battle up inshallah kusiana na maudhu yaya ah itakuwa ni swala la mwisho mwingine atatusame man nafikiri sheikh asema atarudi tena ana muhadhara siku mbili hapa kuhusu tajali assalamu alaykum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh i have my question i just want to ask how do how do you say about khilafa is it fard or is it not fard shukra one of the great betrayals one of the great 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 betrayals by the world of Islamic scholarship was the betrayal in the world of money that's the monetary system and the banking system we betrayed the truth the next big betrayal is in the political system that Allah says to the angels inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa I'm going to place a khalifa on earth and when you want to know what or who is khalifa don't ask CNN ask the Quran let the Quran answer the question and Allah answers the question and he says Ya Dawood first person first person Ya Dawood Inna ja'alna ka khalifatan fil ard I'm here appointing you as khalifa on earth tell the politicians to come and listen tell the politicians to come and listen Inna ja'alna ka khalifatan fil ard We hereby appoint you as khalifa on earth Fakhkum Bayna al-nasi bil haq Let your government Let the state Let the law Be based on truth 
Not truth that comes from Washington. Allah is al haq So truth can only come from Him. Tell that to the universities for me. He is truth. And so truth can only come from Him. And so politics and the state and government and law it must be based on the truth which has come from Allah that truth did not come for the first time to Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu we are not so stupid that truth has been coming in the world long before we came to the world this ummah so we are not so arrogant as to believe we are the only people with truth. No. The foundation of truth is one supreme God. So wherever in the world, even if in your African religions, you find them recognizing one supreme God. Even if they worship other gods and goddesses, like they worship Jesus, and they worship the Holy Ghost and so on. But if they believe in one supreme God, these people have truth. Respect the truth wherever you find. Do you know that in the Hindu Vedas, in the Hindu Vedas there is one supreme God? Yeah. And so Allah goes on to say, فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا تَتَّبِئِ الْهَوَىٰ And do not follow your own agenda in parliament. Don't follow your own agenda in parliament. No. Follow the truth. فَيَدِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If you pursue your own secular politics, you're going astray. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَدِلُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ بِمَا نَصُوا يَوْمَ الْحِسَابِ Tell the politician this. That if you depart from the truth from Allah and you go misguided then there is terrible punishment waiting for you. Because you forgot that there will one day be a day of accounts. This is the Khilafah state. The Khilafah state is a state which functions on the basis of truth which has come from Allah. How come we forgot that? How can we allow the system of secular nation states to take over? And how come like donkeys, excuse my violent language, because I'm 77, I could talk a little hard now. How come like a pack of donkeys, we all go and validate this alternative to the Khilafah state at election time? When you go and vote in the election, you are validating the system. And I'm sorry to say this, but one of the most important voices in India who betrayed the Khilafah state was Dr. Iqbal, Dr. Muhammad Iqbal. And the Pakistanis are very angry with me, they don't want me to criticize him. But not because I criticize Dr. Iqbal does it mean that he's not a great scholar. Yes, he's a great scholar. But Dr. Iqbal said that the modern Republican state with his parliament, listen, is an adequate substitute for the Khilafah and is there in black and white. This is not poetry. This is black and white. And that is why Pakistan emerged, was born in the wrong hospital. Here is an example. Here is an example of the next great betrayal of this Ummah. That we abandoned the Khilafah. And we have accepted Dajjal's substitute for the Khilafah. Ah, uh, Shah Allah. Maneno matamu, lakini 
wakti nao pia ni muhimu tutamuomba mwalimu wetu alustad harith atakaram aweze kukamilisha maudhu yetu ya leo na kumshukuru shekhe letu na nyote mlihudhuria kwa sababu hafla yetu imekuwa na khitamu humisko Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa salatu salamu ala rasulillah wa ala baiti rasulillah siku inuka kutuwa mawaidha siku inuka kutuwa neno kwa neno maneno alo zungumza huyubana lakini menuka kuwapa kiini cha maneno yake ameanza kwa sura turkaf amekuja kutaja habari ya masihu dajjal amekuja kutueleza habari ya maraj al bahrain anno majma al bahrain amekuja kisa kutueleza habari wa allamnahu min ladunna ilma na huyo lufundishwa mambo kama haya watu wengi kufbi aitwa alkhadir na akatuonesha lengo la maneno haya yote amezigawanya elimu namna mbili ya nje na elimu ya ndani ya moyo asema hii ndio mrengo wake kwa sababu mtumi Musa pamoja kuwa ni mtumi lakini alipoonesha kwamba ni katika mtu hodari sana ndio Mwenyezi Mungu alimwambia ende wale samaki alokuwa amemtukua na 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 ule gulam zikaenda zikapotea akawa mwenye kwenda mara ya baharini ndipo atakapokupata mtu wa kumfundisha yeye na ye alikuwa ni huyu wa alamnahu min ladunna ilma watu wa ilmrengo maalum ilmu hii waita ilimu ya mambo ya ndani ya moyo ilimu ya taqwa na ilimu ya ikhlas na mambo kama hayo kisha katuonesha habari ya aya muhkamatu na mutashabihat katuonesha hapa ndipo shetani huzifuata zile mutashabihat masihu tajal ili kupata kuwapoteza watu wengi kutokana na ayatun mutashabihat akaenda akaenda katika sura turkafi katuonesha wa amal gulamu wa wa tangule mtoto wa luwawa na kenda paka kutueleza mambo yote na katuunisha kula likitendeka jambo mtumi Musa alikigutuka ah mbona yamekuwa namna hii kisha yote kaelezwa na alkhadir yote kuonesha mtu awe na tawadhu namna atakao kuwa hodari awe na tawadhu hakuna habari ya kugota gota kifua ni nani kama mimi ni nani aniweza mimi nani aweza kuniingia mimi haya shekhe maonesha haya tutupekesha mahali tena kajibu masuala yalokuwa yako ndani ya mada kwa tawadhu yake na kufanya kazi ya dawa siku nyingi yote akayajibu na kula mmoja akafurahi kwa jawabu aliyopoa zaidi tu katika mambo ya masihu dajjal alipoona watu wana hamumu zaidi alisema atakuwa na muhadhara mwingine na katika muhadhara mwingine ule wale walio na shauku zaidi juu ya mambo kama hayo watakuwa na nafasi atayaleta na atayerefusha kidogo na atajibu masuala mengine akiona dharura ya kwamba mauzui haya ndio yanayohitajiwa sana alisisitiza
tiza sana watu washike uchamu na elimu ya zaidi ndani ya moyo ya kumfanya mtu kweli mwaminifu mtu ambao mwenye kuwa mwaminifu kwa Mwenyezi Mungu mwenye kuwa mwenifu kwa mtumi kwa watu na mambo kama hayo kayasitiza sitiza sana sasa kwa kuwa tuwaona tumetukua watu, watu wakati mwingi na madhabi yangu hayapendi watu kuwekwa sana si yangu ni ya mtumi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam kwa hapendi watu wawekwe sana mpaka katika tarikh huambiwa kana yutilu salata wa yaqsuru alkhutab salaki sanya mrefu khutba kisanya fupi khutba ni mihadharat na nini na nini hungia katika upande wa khutba let me say something konya bayenu nasema that your audience they are extremely happy by the what you preach you what you say to them appreciated it and uh, they had been attracted so much some of them they will have so eagerness to follow you wherever you are in order to listen from what is coming from your mouth so silently they pray for you they wish you the best of yourself assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh inshallah dua adhan salat alhamdulillah wa salatu salam ala rasulillah wa ali baiti rasulillah اللهم احسن عاقبتك